Hello and welcome everyone, Fog here. Before everything, as always, every game I review are done 100% to have a better idea of what I'm talking about and to be sure that my opinion of the game is final and with everything the game has to show me. Now, I'll admit I didn't do the DLC of Nier Automata and therefore won't talk about it, but as I've seen, it had some side quests Coliseum and some new skins for the characters, which is quite minor and I do not think it will change a lot to my judgement there. Also, I've been playing Nier Automata on PC and more exactly on Steam. I do not know exactly about other platforms and as for Steam, I didn't have any performance problem. Even though I know that the game used to be having a lot of problems, there was apparently a patch that resolved most of these issues. Also, before we start, I'll mention that I've used a controller and that I do not know how the game does with mouse plus keyboard controls. But that it's a console focused game, I've played it with a controller. I also wouldn't suggest anyone with hands problem to play this game as your hands are gonna be strained a lot, the game asks for a lot of quick trigger actions. And last thing, there won't be any spoiler in this review, as I think story is one of the main reasons to play this game to begin with, and I do not want to ruin a game some people might fall in love with. Now let's talk about the game. Nier Automata was developed by Platinum Games and published by Square Enix. It is a blend of action RPG, shoot them up and sometimes even platformers. Nier Automata is a game that focuses a lot into storytelling. It has a complex world and many mysteries that you'll uncover after playing it, and some more where you might have to check on internet to understand everything. That doesn't mean the rest of the game is bad, far from it actually, but the story is the core of the game. What I mean by that is that during the game, you'll sometimes have moments where the story prime over everything else, and you'll be unable to use some function like for example, you won't be able to talk to NPC while there is still a dialogue running. When you do the game for the first time, it's alright since you don't wanna miss those dialogues anyway, but when you're replaying a chapter to be able to end what you've missed, it get boring to have to wait. That is the smallest part of story before gameplay there is. Other examples are even more annoying and were in my opinion much more bothersome. And when I had to replay the game, I was telling myself, oh god, not that again. And if I'm being vague and do not specify the other parts, it is on purpose to tell you the least amount possible about story to not risk to spoil you anything. But trust me, there is more bothersome than this. You'll also have to replay the game three times to get it entirely. Now, it's up to everyone how they feel about that. As for me, I have to say I felt bored for a long period of time because of it, and it was tough for me to continue to play the game because of how slow some parts were. I do not know if I'd have finished the game if I wasn't a completionist or told it was one of the best RPG on the market. Now about that, a lot of people claim Nier Automata is one of the best games they've ever played and it is mostly what made me play this game with huge expectation, and it is maybe why I didn't like this game as much as I would have hoped. Now, don't get me wrong, I do not think Nier Automata is a bad game. Far from that, I believe Nier Automata is a good but flawed game that will be and is adored by many and will be misunderstood by others. It is a game that will touch the soul of many people that find its story and the theme that surround it the most pleasant. While some others I believe will find it boring and pompous and I'm in the middle of this and will try to help you to find tools to understand if you'll be in the first or second groups of those people. I'd like to mention as well that Nier Automata is the sequel of Nier Replicant. The story of Automata is hundreds of years later, making it not a direct sequel. But I believe there might be some easter eggs linking both of them together. I'm not exactly sure as I didn't do any replicant yet, but there shouldn't be anything too big that prevents you from starting with Automata if you wish to do so, aside from maybe knowing a bit more the world in which Automata takes place. Now about the story itself, I'll explain the pitch and world, I won't go into too many details as always in order to keep it vague, so don't worry about spoilers, there won't be any. The story began with humanity on the brink of extinction as they wage a lost war against the machines. Humanity thinks that they are about to be eradicated, flee to the moon in order to prepare their counter-attack. It is then that they create the project Yora, that is the creation of Android units. You will be playing as Toby, one of those Android units, and be tasked with eliminating machines and reconquering Earth from them. It is oversimplified, but you start the game with more or less those information. 
The prologue will see you going to get rid of a machine threat with a squadron of other androids. You'll discover the different type of gameplays there and you'll rapidly see that the camera changes a lot of views and it's also one of the specificity of this game, but mostly when you're doing the story. The game itself will be action RPG when you're doing subquests and exploration, but there will be a lot of moments in the story where you'll have to be doing some shoot them up segments. So be aware, the game isn't all action RPG, there is a big part of shoot them up as well. As for the platforming segments, they are mostly in the open world when you're exploring. There is a lot of secrets hidden in the open world as well. Some will require some slight platforming to reach, but usually nothing too hardcore. The open world ain't very big. It is quite small even. As someone that isn't too fond of open world, I think it's the right size and that didn't bother me. Obviously, some parts of it were better than others, but it's overall well designed. The entire map is built around the city as its center, which will help you to find where you need to go every time. As for the secrets and even some side quests, one thing that bothered me is that if you do not use a guide, you're in for a lot of trouble. Good luck knowing what to do. It is the same to find all weapons. Honestly, without a guide you'll be searching for a long time, as most of them are hidden in specific spots, some require something specific to unlock, some others need to be found at certain chapters even. As for the weapons, it's not very important as they are mostly just skin with a small amount of differences, but for some side quests that give a bit of lore, it can be a bit more annoying to guess what to do. Side quests will often help understand the world or simply just be well written plot wise. But as for the gameplay part of those, it will be fetch quests galore. And that is one of the major downsides of this game. The side quests, while well written and interesting for the story, tend to be boring gameplay wise and tend to ask you to kill something or to simply go fetch something and move you around the map. Not the best part of the game on this. I'd like to mention that there is a guide on the internet that can guide you through all the best side quests as some are overall worse and uninteresting. Let's talk a bit deeper about the gameplay now. You'll most of the time play with the action RPG controls, but sometimes you'll play as well with the shoot them up controls. I'd say the game will be 60 or 65% of action RPG, and the rest will be shoot them up. Now, don't be too afraid. It's not hardcore shoot them up either. I've been able to play the game to completion and I've never did do any shoot them up, so it's not hardcore at all. Depending on the difficulty you pick, that is, but we'll talk about difficulty a bit later. Both gameplays are well made and non drag the game down. The action RPG gameplay is more customizable to how you prefer to play, while the shoot demo gameplay is more simple but still works wonders. As for the action RPG style, you'll be able to choose between four types of weapons. Short swords, big swords, spears and melee. You can equip your weapon in two different slots, light attack and heavy attack. All weapons have different attacks depending in which spot you put it. Some are faster, some do more damage or better AOE, that really is up to how you prefer fighting overall. You'll also have a pod that can fire anytime you want at enemies. There is three types of pods and they all have their way of firing. Gatling, laser and missile. You can swap anytime from one to the other once you've unlocked them. Pods will possess skills as well, that can help you combo, to damage or simply protect you, there is a bit of everything there. There is up to 17 pot skills. And in a perfect world, it will seem that this is a great amount of choice, but a lot of those are secret as well, and you'll need to unlock them. The problem lies in the fact that you most likely will end the game before seeking those secrets, as the structure of the game being quite complicated will lead you to end this one to unlock the chapter select. What I mean by structure of the game being complicated, is that you cannot do everything whenever you want in your automata. Sometime there'll be something and going to fetch a secret just won't be possible. Now, obviously you'll be able to replay the game with everything you've unlocked, but unless you love the side game, you won't do it. So most people that just play casually to enjoy the story will have a large chunk of the possibility of gameplay hidden from them. That is in my opinion something bad. Most people that play Nier Automata for the first time and to just enjoy the story will most likely be using the same weapons and style of gameplay. I'm pretty sure about it. Only those that truly love the game and found it fascinating will see further in all the possibilities it has to offer. The gameplay in itself is very quick and based on reflex, dodge and combo. 
It is quite hard to master, but there is the possibility to be able to dodge everything and do some sick combo that 99% of us will never do, but the possibility to do things that are pretty to the eyes is there. For casual players, you'll most likely use the same combo often, but it remains visually pleasant, it's good overall. The game is often about dodging things, even in the action RPG segments, as there is often a lot of projectile on screens. Depending on the difficulty setting you're playing on, it is more or less punishing to get hit. But for a player that plays the game in normal difficulty, you'll be fine with being hit plenty, as healing items are extremely cheap and can be stocked to up to 99 per item. Now, the shoot them up gameplay is much more simple, and often you'll be able to fire the gatling, send missile, or use your sword to destroy the projectile, or attack enemies in melee. It is very basic, and if you see the video that is running, you'll see some of it. As for the level up, they make you eat a bit stronger, and allow you to fight enemies with a higher level as well, as you cannot damage anything that is more than 30 levels above you. There is a chip system to allow you to custom your character as well, and those works in both gameplays. Those chips allow you a lot of different possibilities from increasing your attack to healing you after not taking damage for X seconds to finally having auto loot. It's really diverse, you'll be able to buy more memory at the merchant to increase the number of chips you equip. The stronger the chip, the more memory it takes. I wasn't a huge fan of this system, there is a lot of different chips but some end up being stronger than others. Not many of them change the gameplay, they mostly are increasing your stats. Some can be helpful, like if you do a perfect dodge is slow down time, those obviously can help break the game. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this system, but it is there. About the graphics, I've heard a lot of people saying Nier Automata didn't particularly look good, and I have to say I disagree. I think the game is quite pretty, but remember that I'm used to play old games, so take that with a grain of salt. The models of the character are very detailed, and maybe the world in itself is less, but in my opinion there is nothing to say. Except maybe the character design that can be hit or miss, I found the graphics to be pretty and definitely one of the strong points of the game. Now about the soundtrack, there is no other word than masterpiece. It fits extremely well the game, and while I wouldn't listen to it outside of the game, it fits the game too well and is of too high quality to be called anything else than this. In all the time I've played the game, I didn't get bored of it a single time. If you're actually into game OST, I do suggest you to play the game directly to experience it to its fullest. The OST alone is a reason to play the game in my opinion. I'd like to talk about the difficulty as well, and there is four of them. First of all, easy that allow you to use some special chip that will make the game extremely easy and is the best difficulty to simply enjoy the story and not bother yourself. Then normal, that is a difficulty quite forgiving, but disable the previous side ships. Then hard, that will disable the lock on and make enemies hit harder. And then very hard, that is one hit KO from every enemy as far as I know. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't have the guts to try that one. You'll need to be particularly skilled to even pass the prologue in very hard. Difficulties range from the game has no difficulty, to the game is almost impossible. You'll be able to choose which one is made for you and I think that's good. I personally play the game on normal difficulty. There is no reward for increasing difficulty and since the game didn't particularly please me all that much, I never tried another playthrough in harder difficulty. About the content, you'll most likely have around 60 hours of playtime if you desire to do the 100% legit. Once you end the game, you'll have access to chapter select to complete what you've missed, as well as an achievement shop in case you do not desire to bother yourself with doing achievement the legit way. The story will take you around 20 hours to complete and is the best part of the game. Some subquests are really good but will be asking you to do boring stuff. If you desire to complete the game 100%, be ready to bother with guide to find every little thing hidden in the world and have to deal with some RNG in loot that clearly wasn't needed. Also, the pod upgrades component are way too rare and most of the people will not upgrade their pods during the story. It is also a grind fest that isn't pleasant at all. Overall, I'd say the game is enjoyable for 30 to 40 hours out of the 60. There is some downtime that really hurt the game, some boring grinds, and lots of fetch quests. Those definitely do not help. There is 26 endings, but most of those are simply bad endings without much behind them. 
Now on to the positive, negatives, and then the conclusion. Nier Automata has one of a kind story and the narration is great. The world is well made and the universe is worth taking a good look into. The game also knows how to make you question simple things. The graphics of the game are great. The OST alone is enough to buy the game if you're into video game music. The combat system is good. There is a lot of variety in it. Everything they've done is done well, except maybe sometimes the camera that can be bothersome during some mission. Now, the system of chapters and the way secrets are done will leave a lot of content out of the hands of most players. You will not unlock all of the possibilities the games offer, and that lead to the gameplay of the game being somewhat obscure to some. The story sometimes will hurt the gameplay as well as some other things. You'll also need to be able to enjoy all the different gameplay types. Also, the fact you'll replay the game three times can kill your motivation. Now, should you play Nier Automata? Will you like it? It depends, honestly, but I think you'll have a better idea about it after listening to my arguments. It is quite difficult to talk about what makes Nier Automata what it is without touching a single bit in its story, as it's the most important part of it. But I think doing so will hurt the future people that would like to play it. Also, if you're depressed, that game might not help you either, as the tone of the game isn't very cheerful. I do think Nier Automata is worth a let's play, and if you do not like it, you should just play it on easy, end the story, and then go next game. At worst, there is a let's play on YouTube to watch, but I believe the game is better played to feel things how you're supposed to feel them. In my opinion, Nier Automata is a bit overrated, but only because of the passion of some people. The game has some big flaws, but it remains a game that is worth playing, or at least looking at, because of how unique it is, and if I didn't like Nier Automata, I sure am happy that it exists and wish for more games like this one. I sincerely wish as someone that found Nier a bit more than average, to see more of Yoko Taro simply because of how unique his work is. Nier Automata is the first game from him I'm doing, and I'll definitely do Nier Replicant in the future. To all those that watched this video until now, thank you so much. It now comes to an end, and I wish you a good day and to take care of yourself. If you liked this video, feel free to sub, as there is more video incoming. Bye!